everybody. My name is Ben Hammond. Here to play some tunes to get things started here. We got a great show planned for you, so stick around. Stay cool. Cool luck.
promise me that you will be mine Baby, can you see through these tears I loved you more than those people Say you remember, say you remember Baby, you love you till the end of time Time, 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 time I will love you till the end of time Promise me that you will be mine Baby, can you see through these tears I loved you more than those people Say you remember, say you remember Baby, you love you till the end of time Time, time, time No, I, oh, I will love you till the end of time All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben Hammond. Thank you for tuning in. We got some awesome show program for you today. I got to saw, I got to see some previews of the, uh, the animations. They are amazing, so definitely stick around. And thank you all for listening so much. I would love to. I would love you. I would love. I would love you. I would love you. I would love you. So good. Pe people want to hear more, Ben. <laughs> we'll keep coming back every week. That's right. That's right. So, uh, but until then, let's kick it off <laughs> this way. <laughs> yes. Man, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed you the last three weeks, but this is like next level because I'm fairly certain I heard somebody playing bass, drums, backup singers, at least four different guitar parts. That was nuts. Yeah, that was uh, awesome. You know, 
me and uh, my imaginary band, we've been quarantining together. So <laughs> we got a lot of rehearsals in, you know. <laughs> well, you guys are sounding tight. Oh, That's thanks. right. Hopefully you don't have any uh, like creative differences and there's like fighting, infighting going on. But, uh, well, you know, I can always just turn them off if there is. So. That's true. <laughs> nice. Thanks for warming us up again, Ben. So we heard uh, uh, a little mixture, Chris Isaac's Wicked Game, Lana Del Rey Blue Jeans. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, man, th- that, that, was, that, was, that was sweet. That was great. Yeah. Great, uh, great to be here, guys. Thank you. Yeah, you know what's funny is uh, Wicked Game, we actually have someone who develops artwork for games as a guest today. So... That works really? out. Pro, pro, uh, Rodrigo Cersei probably wears blue jeans. I mean, <laughs> probably does. Odds would, are good. It, would, it wouldn't be a stretch. I mean, yeah. it is quarantine time, so I know pant wearing in general is down as a whole. But <laughs> I bet he owns some. That's right. What do they, what do they call the like the sweat pant blue jean combos? Those have got to be hot right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I. I Jeggings, no, that's the word. Nobody has seen me from below about here for about six months. So <laughs> awesome. Wear whatever je- jeggings I want. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, cool. uh, Ben, ladies and gentlemen, let's get a round of applause for Ben Hammond, everyone. Absolutely. Let's, let's hear it. It's been awesome. <laughs> Very good. Hey, everyone. Right. Welcome. Welcome to the SketchUp Fireside Chat series. We're your hosts, Aaron Dietz and Ann the Goose. And if you're new to the series, we are on week four, halfway through, of uh, eight-week SketchUp virtual Aww. community experience. It's both fun, both fun and informative, both delicious and nutritious. If you're returning, welcome back around the fire. Put your hands around the fire, warm up a bit. This is gonna be an awesome episode. Uh, my buddy, Rodrigo Cersei is going to be on the show. And if you guys don't know Rodrigo, his, his Instagram link has popped up a couple times. Uh, check him out real quick right now if you're not familiar with him. He does some amazing artwork. He does develop content for video games, but he also creates these low poly models and SketchUp. Just awesome looking stuff. We're excited to get to talk to him uh, on the show today. That is right. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting a bit of a lag over all, here. All of a sudden, Steve left the fire and came back. That was, that was all by you know, weird. It's that I'm sitting across from you at this fire, but I'm experiencing lag. So I think just, uh, you know, maybe I just didn't have enough coffee this morning. I need some cowboy coffee. I, I'm just impressed how you can sit there and talk with that. I'm going to try too. Hi, I'm Goose. Welcome to the fireside chat. <laughs> oh, man. That's hard to do. You're good. Well, you know, lots of practice, uh, uh, lots of lag. So uh, let me let everyone know the format of the show is not your typical webinar. The presentation doesn't begin to about 30 minutes. So if you're if you're not here for a good time, you're just here for the facts, come back and see us in 30 minutes. Uh, but if you're, yeah, but we hope that you'll stick around. And as a reminder, today's episode will feature an interview a presentation by our guest, and then a community question and answer uh, session, right? And so um, the episodes expect to be about an hour and a half. Pour yourself a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and let's do this. Aaron, What you know? do you have any suggestions for what I could do to speed up my connection here? I do. Well, not you. You're a presenter, so you're just out of luck. <laughs> no. Those of you attending who are seeing issues, if you're seeing issues with me, apparently issues with Goose is just a thing. You're just going to, I mean, we'll roll with it. But uh, if anything else is chopping like that, click down on the bottom where it says get audio video help and you'll get an opportunity to turn on compatibility mode. And that's just going to buffer the stream. So you'll get a few seconds later than everybody else, but you'll get a nice even stream rather than uh, trying to have these multiple video sources come in at once. So uh, click on compatibility, compatibility mode and it should eliminate any issues. Unless you're having slow internet, there's not a lot that we can do about your Perfect. internet. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Max Hedrum over here. Yeah. I, I may, I may need you to point out the things because uh, we're going to do some quick uh, housekeeping here. Oh man! Uh, Since you mentioned that, now that's all I'm be able to think of. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, and so uh, let, let's let's talk about what we have going on, on screen here, Aaron. If you could point out the Q and A ex- uh, section right down below, Q and A, and oh, look, I'm back. I've got okay, That's cool. Funny. Yeah, so so down there, if you if you click on the Q and A, you can ask a question specifically for our guest Rodrigo. If you see someone has already posted a question that you want to hear answered, just click the little up arrow, upvote that question. The uh, the questions that bubble to the top will be the questions we'll be asking here toward the end of the show. 
The recording of this presentation will be available immediately after the show at this very link where you are right now. So uh, yeah, if you if you miss on the live stream or if you wanna come tune in uh, later on tonight, just come back here. Uh, last thing is going to be the polls. So if you look down below, uh, eventually you'll see something that pops that says poll with the number one on it. And uh, I think we have a poll. We should do it right now. Yeah. I, I mean, that'd be All cool. Right. So here's our first poll. Since our guest is working in the video game industry, we want to know what was your favorite video game franchise? I know there's a lot out there and there's some that don't show up on the list, but these were according to a lot of places we looked at the top ones. So we want to know of our viewers, what's what was your favorite franchise? Was it Mario Brothers, Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Grand Theft Auto, or Halo? So of those five, which one did you think was the best franchise? Goose, I know you have some thoughts on this one. I do, I do. And you know, I voted for my second favorite because my first favorite is Half-Life. I'm such a geek, I love Half-Life and I played it a lot as a kid. It gave me my first carpal tunnel syndrome, so that was fun. Memories. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, and and I know that I see the votes are tallying up. I'm I'm curious about this, Aaron. What what was everyone's favorite gaming platform? Like of all the gaming platforms that you've played or you've owned? Yeah, uh, we don't we don't even need to put that in a poll. Let's just get that in the chat. Yeah. So, so. Here, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put one one down here. Uh, here it goes. My favorite gaming platform, I think, is the Game Boy Micro. Does anyone? Not many people remember that one. And the funny, the funny thing is, I went and looked recently, and I saw that brand new, unopened uh, uh, Game Boy Micros are going for like five and six hundred bucks. Whew. Mm. Look, we're, we're getting a uh, 3DO Sega PC counts. That's that is a system you can play a game on. <laughs> Board games, Jody. Oh, Nerd. come on, man. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> Nerd, where's your favorite legacy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh man i admit it, i'm a nerd too yeah There's oh good man a lot of a lot of tendo like fans yeah. yeah ipad i guess that works <laughs> awesome. so let's take a, let's take a look and see what the poll says what was what was the number one gaming franchise wow it's a me 50 percent like that best i i mean i'm I, I threw in Zelda there because I have thoroughly loved Breath of the Wild and super excited for the next one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have had a lot of video game systems over the years. I got to admit that uh, I've probably had over a dozen different ones. So Super, super. S cool. Super Mario. Yeah. So um, do we have... Do we have anything special for the guests today for, for, our, for uh, our, our viewers today? That's right. Yeah. So we, we did this uh, last couple times and you guys seem to enjoy it. So we are going to give you give away something else later on in the presentation. So Rodrigo's going to come up a little bit. He's going to talk with us, hang out with us. He's got a presentation he's prepared. And at the end of the presentation, he's going to come back and ask you guys a question about what he showed. And the person who is paying attention and answers the quickest is going to win a prize. And let's talk about what that prize is. Ah, yes. The Pay close attention because the first person to respond with our guest quiz with the correct answer, spelling included, well, maybe not in this case, will receive a pair of special edition face masks designed by Rodrigo Cersei himself. So let's, let's look at these guys. Uh -huh. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, 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 Mm. So yeah, you could check out the design on this bad boy. Like it's so detailed. I don't know if you can see what's going on in here, but there's like little cars and taxis and like buildings. So oh. we're not we're not going to give you the ones that Goose and I are wearing. We actually have some still in their nice closed baggy, and it, we're going to throw some extras in there too because Ooh. we're sending it to you. So uh, we're going to throw in this. This is a uh, it's a SketchUp model we did on our live stream. It's the Mandalorian helmet, and it's a, it's a hologram. It's reflecting green. That's why it's disappearing on the green screen. <laughs> and Rodrigo doesn't even know this, but we got mm. a super extra special thing that we're going to throw in there, too. And that is a little something that looks like this. Ooh, Ooh a one-of-a-kind, limited edition as in only one exists, Wow. statuette of rodrigo's boba fett model so that, that is gonna be 
Awesome. And you can have it. So I can have so it. One of you can have it. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, like I said Rodrigo didn't know we were going to give that away even, but uh, yeah, here let's let's let me pull it up on the full size camera. It's, it's it was too tiny. I wanted to make a special, but yeah, this little figurine could be uh, yours. So pay attention oh, to everything Rodrigo says, and then answer his question first at the end of the show. That's right. Oh man, so Aaron, you know what? It's time for a SketchUp community shout out. Let's do it. Awesome. Yeah, so SketchUp community shout out. Uh, uh, as you may or may not know, we find people who are in the SketchUp community who are doing super awesome things, and then we share them with you. And I think Aaron found a great one today. That's right. We We're talking about some cool. Uh, we, we didn't have somebody else who does low poly design like Rodrigo does, but we did find somebody who's doing some cool designs of SketchUp. So we have this uh, designer on Instagram called Monster Party Wars. And the stuff that he creates is, uh, I mean, they're these beautiful sci-fi Star Wars models. He creates all this stuff in SketchUp, piece by piece, uh, vehicles, background. Uh, he's making the, the, the run from the Death Star, so he's making all the pieces there. But the cool part is not only does he design it in SketchUp, but then he goes back and he actually builds it. So these are either kit bash what? where he makes different parts and pieces and pulls them together or he actually goes through and 3d prints pieces like he's doing for the death star run so pretty cool stuff and and i mean i, I think cool is probably underselling it yeah yeah definitely that. yeah if, if anything it's at least awesome. it's yes. awesome it, it is, is. yeah so check and out if you on instagram that's right. Follow Monster Party Wars on Instagram. Click that little call to action down there. It'll open up a window for you. Speaking of awesome, you know who else is awesome? All of our Fireside Chat SketchUppers who have joined us here tonight. So let us know if you're celebrating something special today. What, what is good that's going on in your life right now? Did you get a new job? Uh, you, you having a birthday party? Uh, did you're your really have... happy this morning? Yeah. Did your puppy <laughs> have kittens? <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, that would be exciting. What do we yeah. have here? So we want to hear what's going on with you guys. So we want to give you the ability to give yourself a shout out and tell us what's going on with you. Yes. So Jody, people, before, Jody's yeah. celebrating Wednesday today. <laughs> yes. Another wonderful day where I get paid to use SketchUp all day. That's awesome. Living the yes. dream, Sebastian. <laughs> oh, time. man. Oh, harvest time in Iowa. What do we harvest in Iowa this time of year? Corn. That's 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 it, right? Oh, yeah. Well, our guest happens to have had a special occasion yesterday when he turned 31. Awesome. Yes. More. That's good. That's good. Happy birthday, Rodrigo, our guest. <laughs> you're older, more mature, more wise today. So you, your presentation is going to be even better today. That's right. <laughs> they harvest beer and corn, it looks like. Corn. Okay. Well, hey, that's uh, that's awesome. Awesome community. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. And we're, we're glad, if, we're, we're proud of everything you have to celebrate. But right now is time to bring our guest up on stage. So we are going to invite Rodrigo Cerci to come on up on stage with us. All right, Rodrigo, let's do this. Rodrigo, come on stage, buddy. Yeah! Hey, guys! Hey! Hey, hey. hey Rodrigo. Wow, you How look you so doing? so much uh, older and more mature than you did when we met on one day. Yeah, I do. I, I, I just wake up and I feel like, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm mature today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I check this it. out, man. I, I, I doubt you, you guys have... Oh, nice. <laughs> But I'll need my proper glass for this one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit dark out around the fire to wear glasses, sunglasses. Yeah. yeah. It's good. And, right? uh, do, do you guys can see me okay? Yeah, everything looks awesome. Yeah. It uh, sounds good. So thank you for coming on the show. We're super excited to talk to you. Nice. Thank you guys for having me. All right. So I, I think we're going to start with some, just some, some questions that we have for you. So I think Steve's going to take one first. Okay. Yes. Yes. So... You are our first guest from Brazil. And I know yeah. that SketchUp is extremely popular in Brazil. 
Yeah, so as long as we're, yeah. So as long as we're talking about things that are popular, what are the two most popular foods in Brazil? Hmm. Feijoada. Oh, feijoada, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll type it here. Okay. <laughs> so you can Google it. Feijoada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feijoada. Yes. It's, it's like uh -huh. this. And uh, well, people from the chat can, can help me. Uh, <laughs> Maybe barbecue, uh, churrasco here is a big deal. Okay. Yeah, okay. you need to, to eat like a Brazilian barbecue. It's like very different from American barbecue because you you guys do it wrong, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. And we have yeah. people from Texas in, in, in the, the chat today. So I, I'm, I'm going to back you up. I, I think one of the problems we have with barbecue is we coat it with all this brown sugar and sweet sauce. <laughs> I, I, it's all about meat, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, uh, just another thing. Arroz e feijão is, I think, it's the the biggest Brazilian dish. Uh, the, uh, it's like rice and beans. Everything here, we 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 go with rice and beans. You know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I do like those Good. things. Yeah. Good deal. So, so quick question: uh, How did you start using SketchUp? Where did you come across that? And and. What makes you continue to use it as you do video game asset design, that sort of thing? Well, uh, actually, I, um, I I happened to, to, to know SketchUp before I went to college. I, I, I had this on a, on a demo CD room or something like that. And I tried like uh, building, building, I think it was like SketchUp or four, four, something like this. And uh, I just messed around a bit, but uh, uh, I started using it more more frequently on on, 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 uh, on college. I, I'm an architect, graduated architect. So I use it like a lot. And it's been like, uh, I was thinking yesterday, it's been like a, something around 12 years I, I use SketchUp. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why that's why this, so much... this gray hair here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how you got so much better at SketchUp than me. It's because you got a couple years on me. That's, that's oh why. yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of practicing in SketchUp, and it's funny because it's it's still I still find like different ways to use it. It's like it's it's cool because it's a a, a, a really uh, s simplified approach to three D. But uh, when you dig in, into into SketchUp, you find that there is a lot of depth in, in there too. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Rodrigo, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question sure. here. So, in the Webble sphere, I see that you're referred to as Big O. Yeah. No, it's. What? Yeah. What, yeah. <laughs> what, you tell us the origin story. What is Big O? Okay. Yeah. This is the my origin story because i i have uh, uh me and my brother we are like 10 months apart so we are almost twins you know <laughs> so uh he from an, an early age he he had like a hard time saying rodrigo <laughs> so he just called me Vigo. <laughs> and uh this this until today we call i call him his name is murilo so i call him lilo and he calls it Vigo, so this is stuck. <laughs> I like nice. it. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, very good. That's awesome. Um, okay, so, so in, in your, I hope other people have seen some of the stuff you've posted. Everyone's looked at Instagram by now. Um, yeah. But what other? Obviously, you don't use uh, just SketchUp. There's other pieces you work so work with. Yeah. So and I don't want to step on your your. Uh, presentation too much, but are there other ah, no key, key pieces of software in your workflow that you use? Yeah, I the, 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 the tools that I use most are SketchUp, uh, Blender, uh, Photoshop, and Unity basically are mm -hmm. the, the tools that I use most. Unity when I'm working with games and real-time things, but uh, mostly, uh, yeah, these are mostly the tools that I work with. Awesome. Yeah, the tools yeah. of the job. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Rodrigo, I know that you have a jam-packed presentation. We saw what it looked okay. like, and we want to make sure to give you plenty of time. So nice. I'm, I'm going to ask one last question. Um, what advice would you give your 10-year-old self? So if you could go back 
like right now, if you go back to when you were 10 years old and whisper some advice into your own ear, what, what would you, what would you tell yourself? That is hard, man. <laughs> Start using SketchUp at version one instead of four. Yeah, maybe that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good advice. Yeah. All right, I, I had one last question too. Um, we've seen some of the art you put up, but can you talk at all about what you're actually working on right now? Yeah, uh, right now I, I'm working on a personal project. I'm working on an indie game I'm making. Uh, I'm, I, I started, uh, I worked in the, in the past two years, I worked with, with a game company and uh, I got a lot of skills and uh, I learned a lot of technical things. And I just, this year, I was like, this year went to hell, right? So uh, <laughs> I was like, hey man, I think this is a, a good opportunity to try some uh, some personal projects and some things that hang in on my mind and try to, to put this to work, you know? And I find out that this really, really, really hard to make games alone. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm on it. I, I'll have soon. I'll have more things to show to put on Instagram, and if you guys follow me. Uh, by the way, just something I want to. Uh, uh, Aaron, you have like you have more. You have more work from me than I have. I don't have the stuff you. Have. <laughs> yeah. One time, I told you. Yeah. I want this one. This one is for me. It's not for them. <laughs> This is V1. I, I'm going to keep working on it and make them even better, but uh, I figured That's that would awesome. make a fun giveaway. So, yeah. Thank, thank a lot for printing that one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, I, as you move into that developing, I, I actually started in the software industry as a tester. So, oh, you know, right. Cool. I, I, I sent you a test. I, I did, on. yes. That was, that was yeah, pretty yeah. fun. I, yeah. I can say that I saw it before it was released. That's right. <laughs> Steve, That's nice awesome. test, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fun. Uh, I'll, I'll wear it, you know, out on the street, and people will will spot it. Like especially young the youngsters, you know, be like Atari. I'm like, yeah. Oh, maybe know, not like, the youngsters. <laughs> I don't know about the youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, Steve thinks a lot of people are youngsters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is my this was my first gaming console was the Atari nice. 2600, and my first computer was actually uh, Apple IIe. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Nice. I go. Weird. I think my first my first PC was a two eight six two eight six. Oh, yeah, two eighty six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I, I had. Uh... It was before painting, I think. Just a little before, <laughs> not that before. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we've come a long way. But you know, one thing that these things all have in common is that we've all we we've all used them to play games. And I think, Aaron, that we have a game that we we're going to play today. It is. Sampling. Oh yeah, it's game time, y'all. Yeah, and what's what's the name of today's game, Aaron? We're gonna play a game called Sampling Cersei. So much. Yeah. I didn't know about this. No, that's yeah. You, it would be cheating if you knew about this beforehand. So what we did was we went and looked at your existing work, and yeah. you have some awesome in-depth models that we really wanted to dive into with you. Uh, so. We want to know how well you remember your models. So what we did was I went through and picked five different images you posted. I cut a small image out of each one. And I want to see from that small image if you know what the bigger piece is that it came from. OK. All right. So we're going to hop in and see if you know where each of these characters came from. So here's the first one. All right. This, the, these are for me? Yep. Yes. That's, this is, OK, cool. I mean, some people might know it if they follow your stuff, but this is this is to ask you. You're doing your own portfolio review right now. Nice. Okay? Yeah. Here yeah. we go. Here's the first one. Do you remember where this guy oh. came from? Yeah, sure. This is for uh, the Harry Potter Quidditch illustration. That's right. Here yeah. he is. Right here. Right in the back. <laughs> so again, Do I those of you the, the, the Boba Fett figure. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, may maybe so. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's only one, though. You got to still got to get through four more, right? All right. All right. All right. Moving forward. Do you recognize this character? Yeah, sure. This is from. Uh, I think he's from the Wall, the the Game of Thrones illustration. 
That's right, yeah. right here. Yeah. <laughs> so those of you who don't know Rodrigo's work, I mean, he has lots of, of models he's posted, but these are by far my favorites. These were actually the images that got us excited about Rodrigo. And this is where we reached out for, to him to uh, see if he wanted to hang out with us last year or two years Ooh. ago at base camp. Yeah. All right, moving forward. I got. I, I just got to point out too, uh, all these dudes have mohawks. Are you, are you, are you yeah, like, a lot of them have mohawks. <laughs> it's much easier, I think, to make. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. It's not a secret desire to have a yeah, mohawk. Yeah, you just go for the easy things, you know? That's right. All right, do you remember where this guy came from? Uh, this one is from the Tatooine scene. The Boom! Cool. That's You're right. He's right. right here on the edge. Oh, right, right down there. Cool. Yeah. So close. <laughs> awesome. All right. Three out of three. We're almost there. Two more. Let's see. Let's keep moving forward. What about this guy? Ah, this one is easy. This is from the New York scene that I'm. Uh... Yeah, the New York scene. You got it. Ooh. He's he's also just off. So he's just he's just right over here. Can't quite see. Him. He's right. just off screen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and this was this was like V one. This is the this is currently my background image on my computer. This oh, really? is the image we use for the masks. This is one of my favorite scenes. This is awesome. Oh, nice man! Thanks a lot. Yeah, I, right. I really need to uh, because this 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 couple of years I I had knees deep into working with games, so I had like short time to make like these scenes, big mm -hmm. scenes. But I I really love them. I, I'm planning one to to do next month. So. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So this is the last one. I'm I'm assuming that he's wearing. He has a mohawk underneath his flight. Yeah, back here. he does. Yeah, he does. Of course. Yeah, I do. I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> last one. This this one is from the the half scene, the half hanger scene. Boom! Right here. That was it. You did it. That was a yeah. five out of five. Yeah. Perfect score. Yeah. You're, you're good natural. work and good work. Yeah, nice. that was awesome. <laughs> oh, man, we're, we're getting close to presentation time. Before we do, though, let's do a little bit of housekeeping again. If you want to ask a question of Rodrigo, sir, see, look down below. It says, uh, ask a question. Click on that. Type in your question. We will ask the most popular questions toward the end. If you see a question that you like, just give it an upvote. And don't forget that at the end of the show, Rodrigo will be joining you in the Fireside Lounge for the after party. So if your question doesn't get answered right now at the end of the show, then you'll have time to ask it then. Uh, good deal. And also don't forget, pay close attention to the presentation. There's going to be a quiz. Rodrigo's gonna ask you a question. The first person to jump in. We'll get, see what Aaron's showing right there? We'll get the awesome Rodrigo Cersei limited edition 3D printed Mandalorian and a pair of Rodrigo Cersei designed face masks to keep you and your loved one safe. So Even Rodrigo okay, doesn't so have this why, stuff yet. Why, why don't I get those things? <laughs> <laughs> these actually, okay, so I, we, we got to tell you, these literally came into Colorado yesterday. So we got these last night. So you'll oh, nice. you'll get one at some point, but did they did people they, were they, 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 so, they, yeah. the, the, the the printing is, is nice? Oh yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. they're beautiful. Yeah, it's it's hard yeah. to do it justice on, on here, but yeah, you can uh -huh. see there's that same nice. scene we just looked at. Cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Nice. There's a little little tiny there's the basketball player with the Mohawk right there. Oh, and yeah. there's a little Chewbacca walking down the street. <laughs> <laughs> As you see in New York. Yeah. As you see, yes. So I, right. I, I, that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duck down. Yeah, right. you, you take it over and we will talk to you in about 30 minutes. And you, you guys, everybody enjoy. Don't forget to add your questions at the bottom. All right. So uh, I'm going to turn my screen share here. Uh, you you guys just, just talk to me a little to... You're still there. You're doing okay. great. You're doing nice. great, man. You're doing we great. haven't yeah. lost you yet. If we lose oh. you, we'll tell you. Wait, no, that won't work. Yeah, that won't work. <laughs> yeah. You, can, you can can send me via Instagram if, if you lost me. There you go. <laughs> nice. So let's begin this. Okay, guys, can you see me? 
because I can't yeah. see. You. I, I'm I am I'm just one one monitor yeah. here. But uh, you're nice. doing great. Great. So welcome, guys. Uh, thank you all for for being here today with me. Uh, my name is Rodrigo Oliveira Cerci. I'm from Brazil, and I've been working with SketchUp with a lot of different uses for it for a, about 12 years right now. Uh, this is the presentation agenda. I'm going to give you a little introduction about myself. Uh, we'll talk, the, the main focus of this presentation, I'll talk a little bit of how I, I approach doing characters on SketchUp. I'll show you a little bit of other works. And maybe if you have time, we can, I, I would like to, to talk a little bit about plugins and shortcuts. We'll have uh, key takeaways, and in the end, we'll have question and answers. Awesome. So, intro. So, Rodrigo Big Oliveira says, oh, who am I? I, 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 uh, I graduated as architect, so uh, this is where I, I get to know SketchUp from. We talked about this in, in, in the, the conversation before. So uh, I, I worked a lot of uh, designing buildings, not only uh, making final image like renders, but SketchUp helped me a lot of in the design process of the, the, the buildings that I work with. I also work with, with architect visualization, with image renders and stuff. And uh, for the past like five years, uh, I, I worked like five years as, as an architect and then I, I jump over to other stuff that I like to work with too. Uh, right now, I work mostly with illustrations and then editorial work and, and art for video game. Apart from art, I do I also tech, tech stuff within Unity. Uh, I implement art and stuff. I'll, I'll show you in a bit. So uh, this is my some of the oldest models that I could find here in my in my of the, my, the work I did at college. This is uh, some images that I worked with within SketchUp during college. These are some render works I did uh, when I, I worked as architect. Some more SketchUp models and renders. These are exploring some stuff, some different uh, design options. Uh, more architecture work that I, I did in this five years. All of, most of these are all rendered with the native SketchUp uh, image. There's no render on these images. Uh, so I, I'm just showing you this so you, you know where I come from, my background, where I, I learned the tools that I use today. Uh, more recently, in the, the past two years, I've been working, I worked with a company, Pixel Dust from Sao Paulo. I worked with them uh, designing uh, two Two mobile games. Uh, this one, Rocket Star, uh, it's, it's launched already. Uh, I made like uh, characters, backgrounds, uh, the structures, environments, a uh, couple of UI elements. Uh, I worked with another artist, Vitor, we own this game. On this too, uh, this one is Idol Sports. You manage like a smart city and stuff. I was responsible for the characters, some layouts, uh, concept charts with the other artists with, from the company. Mm -hmm. A couple of editorial things for the. Mm -hmm, it, it, um, <laughs> nice. uh, think, uh, the, I did a couple of editorial works. These are all works using SketchUp. I really like, as you can see, this uh, isometric view and stuff. I really try to, to, to explore this. This is a little uh, illustration I did for the SketchUp website for SketchUp for Schools. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I really like doing this. It's really fun. Some awesome. larger scenes that, that Aaron showed in the, the beginning of the presentation. I also do in SketchUp character concept chart and modeling. These are some characters that I, I modeled and I, I got a question about that, Rodrigo. Okay. I noticed that in a handful of your characters, there, there's those word balloons, and there's always Japanese writing in there. Is there anything in particular, particular reason you do that, or is that just a? No, style? yeah, actually, because I really like the the, the Japanese characters, mm -hmm. and uh, I I want to to give a feeling when I I 
I played uh, games when I when I was younger. We sometimes we played like Japanese games with Japanese mm -hmm. subtitles that we barely understand, but we still had fun yeah. with that when mm -hmm. you were a kid, you know. So sure. I think that is that is why. <laughs> But it's just some graphical things. I, I just write yeah. like bullshit on this on this this balloon. <laughs> uh, some more characters, concept art and, and modeling. I did this was for uh, two thousand and one Space Odyssey. I make a, a character from the movie. Nice. Uh, some more characters modeling. This is the the part that I mentioned that I I do the the tech part of art. I do rigging. I do animation. Uh, I do like the implementation of art within Unity, like uh, I do shaders, I put the characters together, I make every, everything in, in the art is working so I can save uh, development time so devs don't, don't have to, to deal with this stuff. I try to deal with this before sending it to them to, to make the, it easier for, for development. And it's a, a part, it's a is a part of the job that I really like and I'm really digging into. These are some shader programming. Uh, I'm learning to program and prototype my, my games right now, so uh, I'm making this, this this personal project, this indie game. This is a little picture. I, I think I was stress testing models and stuff here. So uh, the tools that I use most are SketchUp, Blender, Photoshop, Unity. I use Git for versioning the, when I use when I'm working with games. Behance and Instagram are my I do the, the places that I showcase my work. Can you guys see my cursor? Yep. Uh, oh, okay, nice. So uh, the reference, the the references, well, or or who do I steal from? The where the works that I that <laughs> inspired I by. Inspired, yeah, inspired by. It. by it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I'm really into pixel art, axonometric uh, representation, isometric stuff, video game arts, toys. Toys are a big deal in, in my work because I try to make my models look like they are, you can play with them, they are a little toyetic. Uh, fantasy, Japanese, and all geek stuff I'm into. So I'll show a little bit of works that, uh, that, uh, Inspired, inspired. So That's right. this is a, a work from Mordillo. He's from Argentina. I, I had this at my room uh, when I was younger, and me and my brother we used to play with these finding objects and stuff. And this is something that I really catch my eye. I, I love this busy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, some more works, uh, pixel art. This is from a great artist, Sergey Kostik. He's a great pixel artist. Playmobil, uh, RuneScape, Ultima Online, uh, manga stuff. Uh, this a, a group game. This Kentucky Road Zero is a big deal game for me because I think it's the most beautiful game I ever saw, and uh, it uses a uh, very uh, how do I say? It's not simplistic, but it's a stylized uh, way of rendering characters and environments and the scenes. A really beautiful work. If if you guys uh, are into video game, you should play this. Uh, isometric pixel, pixel art, some more low poly designs. This is a great artist. Who do, he he mix he mix and match like pixel art and, and low poly design, which I think is really cool, and they work really well together. Uh, some more pixel art reference. Uh, the way pixel artists shade the stuff, the way they they outline the stuff, uh, the way they the big colors. I I. I I get a lot of inspiration from from this kind of work. Uh, Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery. This was another pixel art game that was really beautiful at, at the time and really inspired me uh, for creating my first characters in SketchUp. So just a little uh, tech limitation and resource management often are imposed on art style and game design, but sometimes it's a deliberate choice. There is beauty in solving problems with limited resources in, in an economic way. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about limitation as a creative too. Uh, the characters in SketchUp. I'll show you a little bit of the characters that this is not, I, I didn't decide this. Actually, I, 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 I'm, I get inspired by it. <laughs> <laughs> this this game, uh, I, I think it was out for iOS at the time, and I, mm -hmm. I think it was really, really beautiful. I dig the characters a lot. 
and uh, I, I, I thought like I could do this in SketchUp. They are very simple and stylish. And I tried at the time uh, making some models that uh, that I, I think I could I could make like humanoids in SketchUp. Before this, I never tried to really to make characters in SketchUp. But this is the first character that I I I, I came up with, uh, inspired by this this game. Cool. So uh, during the time the character uh, I evolved, I kind of evolved it a bit. They started to gain like facial uh, expressions and features like nose and mouth. I got like adding more details to them, like clothing them. And I will show you a little bit of the characters here in SketchUp. So this is the first character. As you can see, they are uh, very basic shapes. They are a bunch of cubes and, and primitive shapes you put together. And uh, I find out that if I I rotate stuff at the joints, I could like pose this these characters in, in any way that I want. This is not correct, but uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, mm -hmm. I could do a lot of posing and uh, putting them in action poses and stuff. This was a more recent characters, uh, not more recent, I think after this one. I started like clothing them and stuff. This is a little scene that I posted some some guys playing a little samba here. That's so good. Uh, some more ca characters evolution. These are from at the time, I was playing a lot of Skyrim, so I was like, oh, okay, let's make some Skyrim characters. And uh, nowadays, uh, I, these are from the, the scene. I think you have this one, right, Adam? Yes, I actually I have a 3 d print of that one, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't have this one. <laughs> I know. I got to send you a pair back. Uh, so these are the, the characters that I use today. The, uh, the, 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 the how can I say the the templates of characters I based I, I have this uh, male female and a, a child here and all the other characters that I do I based on I start with with this one I isolate him and started working with the clothing and I started adding stuff to him I think I have some these are some characters that that derive it from from this one. Uh, I made a little goblin bark here, uh, a fawn, uh, a golem. But as you can see, they all come from the same, the same base, the same character. That's cool. Uh, you can actually by showing that too. It's it's obvious yeah. to me to see how your the joints come together too. You can see that like, you, I'm assuming that got learned by having the first iteration of character where you just had arms floating around. Yeah, yeah, different. sure. Yeah, the, if you if you if you take a look, they are not they are aren't very different from the from the first ones. They are just proportions and stuff that are different, but uh, they keep the same X structure. Uh, I I still can like I still use the the joints to rotate around. The the functionality is, is still the same, but uh, in in a more I don't know a, a better proportions character. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, this is the, 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 the characters that I work right now. This is the base, the, the, the model with the lines shown. As you can see here, I put like some uh, points here. The, these red points are where I need the character to rotate. Uh, he rotates around the, the hips, the, 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 the arm, the hand, the, the feet. So, these is our proportions and rules that I, I established before. Uh, everything else that I model, I, I come and see, uh, and I put next to, to the, the the base character to see if proportions are right, if colors are right, if I if I'm attained to the rules that I that I establish. This is the the humanoid uh, character broke uh, exploded, so you can see it's a collection of uh, basic shapes and not too. It's not really. Uh, complex they are it's really basic at this point the character is is like a lego character you you just started to uh putting costumes to it like 
putting beard, putting hats, to changing clothes and stuff. And I, you can practically create any characters in, in this way. These are some examples derived from, from that character. All right. So what about animal characters? Like uh, I talked about this is I, all humanoids uh, based. So I do choose some, I do some animals in SketchUp. This is a little cow that I made and uh, a horse. And uh, making animals is a little tough, is a little harder than to make human because we, we, know, we know better, we know how a human should look like, but if you try to, to model animals from memory, some memory can trick you. So when you, I'm not working in human shapes, I, I work a lot of, uh, with image references. Uh, I, I put I'll, I'll put here like a breakdown of how I model these these animals. As you can see here, I work directly with the, the image have a reference in SketchUp, and I started blocking out the shapes in, in, uh, on top of the, the the reference image. This is the at, at this point the shapes are all uh, they are all 2D. I'm just drawing 2D from the front perspective. Yeah. And then I started like extruding these parts and, uh, and uh, to make the character 3D and start working in 3D with it. And I, uh, I just want to I want to throw this out too. Uh, okay, you you did your some of your horse design live on Twitch. Yeah, I was I was, I was working on Twitch this this past days, and I'm I'm having a lot of fun streaming on Twitch. I'll drop yeah. the the link in the end of the presentation. Yeah, and, uh, you guys, you guys should come check it out. It was it was a lot of fun to see how Rodrigo works. Uh, yeah, sketch it. <laughs> cool. If you guys can can drop by, it's really nice to to have people to talk to and show what I'm doing at the moment. I would really appreciate. I'll I'll put the link in the the end of the presentation of the Twitch channel. Cool. So this this is where I I just exploded the model here, so you can see that. It's not a big deal. Uh, the, this, the character is still a lot of basic shapes put together. I, I overlap the, the joints so I can I can rotate the joints here. Uh, I'll show you in a bit how I, I do this. It's uh, then I started adding details to the character. I started adjusting proportions based on the this base character here to be uh, more uh, in the in the same proportions of him. Um, this is a little, it's like a baby cow, but, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, 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 this is not a final model yet, but, uh, you know, you see how the, the proportions is mm -hmm. starting to look more like they belong to the universe of this character. Uh, this is the character, the, the, the models that I ended up with, the, the, these three cows. I, I made this one, then I just added variation, coloring, and uh, adding details to that. Uh, I, 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 this, this, the characters I do today, they are using, I, I shade them using flat colors, uh, shading. I'll show this, how I work with this in a bit. Uh, this is the horse model that Arrow mentioned I modeled on Twitch. So again, I'm working exactly in, in like the, the image reference so I can get uh, shapes right and stuff. I keep adding and adding more shapes. And at this point I extruded the, the model so I can start uh, adding volumes to it. And again, making the proportions more like the base character. Uh, at this point, I started uh, trying some poses and positioning limbs to see if the model is working the way I intended to. Uh, this is the, the horse that I posed. Uh, as you can see here, the, the joints here, I, I posed them rotating like this. Nice. So I do, I do, no, this is wrong. Uh, I, I wrote, I, I posed the character like this and tried to, if, see if the pose is right, if the, the sides of the limbs are working okay. And so, yeah, this is the, my final horse model. Uh, it's, I put this uh, down here to show you a bit of how I keep my save files. I, every time I do uh, something important to the model, I save another iteration so I can keep a history of these files. 
And uh, if I do something more important in one of them, I just put a little tag in front so I can see, I can see where what what that iteration is about. Aaron, that was a tip for you. Save. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hurts because it's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so about the limb system that I came up with within SketchUp. The way I, I, this is a big deal for the characters because they have to, to, to have joints, they have to move. So how do I do this in SketchUp? Okay, uh, this, is, this model is a little different from the, the, that other arm that I showed you. Uh, it has a, a, little, a little semicircle at, at the, the bottom of the, the, the limbs. This is because uh, what I can do with this is that uh, I can like rotate this and I still have this limb. Uh, how can I say it? Help me here. I don't know. Uh, it's moved, it's not moved, but I, I have a, yeah. a, a rounded yeah. corner around uh, here. And uh, you, you, don't, you, you wouldn't happen to, if, you, if this is a problem like, uh, if you don't, if you don't want to, to have like this space here, mm -hmm. that sometimes we end up, we end up with rotating like this. I, I do the semicircle here so that the arm or leg can rotate and keep this this rounded uh, this rounded thing here. If I'm working for for games, I, I do a little bit different because we have to read this. But uh, I, I do this approach when I'm working with illustrations because. If I pose the character uh, in a way that I'm, he's supposed to be on the on the on the scene. Uh, I I will still have this kind of lines and, and things overlapping, but uh, it's easy as like uh, I can alter shell this and join this. So now I have only a single geometry for for the whole arm, and I won't have uh, the problems with the overlapping geometry. That's cool. But what a, a big deal about my work too is that in SketchUp, it, it, I found uh, this in, within SketchUp, but outlines are a big deal for the work that I do. So I carefully uh, join shapes and try to keep these outline things and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it works the same way as the, the in the in the, the animals. They work in the same way. As you can see here, I keep this. Is rounded part so the the link can can comfortably be rotated around and uh, i pose them with the rotate tool uh sometimes moving the limbs a little bit to where i want uh but yeah my posing tools are basically the rotation tools and the move tool. there is no big big uh, uh it's pretty simple it's a really simple approach to do this uh, okay, so here's a, a little examples of the joints and uh, where I I turn the joints, where I pose these limbs. The same way with the animals, I have like uh, I, I pivot the, the the rotation of the limbs around this this circle parts here. Um, so yeah, this is about how I, I pose and, and make the, the, the characters movable. I'll talk a, a little, I'll, I'll just show you a character here in action in, in, within Blender. This character here that I made is already uh, rigged and animated. So as you can see, I didn't even make the, that uh, round thing. It's, it's just a lot of squares and shapes. But when you have the character at a, a distance, that is the, the distance that I want this character to be in the game. It's not really a big deal. You don't, you don't it doesn't really messes the silhouettes or stuff. It really, I think it works. If, uh, this, uh, I'll put like some animations that I did here. That's so okay. you can see the model in action. That's, that's the perfect example of uh, designing for what you need. There's yeah, no need to yeah. put yes, 20,000 yes. polygons exactly. in here because this works. Exactly. This is this is what I what I, I try to do. Like uh, do do stuff in. A, it's, it's sometimes I think it's a lazy way. I, I I was like, man, maybe I'm lazy. Maybe I need to start doing <laughs> things right. But uh, then I see, man, I really don't. This 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 really. Uh, it's okay. It's fine. It works. You know. 
So <laughs> this is a model in action that I'm showing to you. It, he, it was all modeled within SketchUp. Then I bring here to Blender to rig and, and prepare the model for the real time engine. So let's keep moving on. Uh, I'll, 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 I will try to tell to, 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 to talk to you about the way I shade the models, the way I color them. Uh, I put this image here, but I, I think this is a bad example because they look like very much the same. But uh, <laughs> what I mean about uh, uh, shading with flat colors is, I'll, I'll show you here and you, you guys will understand it better. Uh, the way the SketchUp works by default is that the, it shades the model for you. This is very useful because this you can see the, 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 sh the shading, the volume here. So this is just if I create a, a, a if I create a, a material here and apply to this a single material, you have this shading effect. But the way I work within SketchUp is I, I put this model in an unlit fashion. So as you can see now, I, the same material appears uh, the same way in, in every phase of the model. So what I do to, 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 to color this model is every time I need a, a, a like I need a, a darker material to, to, to shade this, this side part here, I create a material here and I basically shade this by hand. I skip the, using the, the, the light from SketchUp and I, I shade my models by hand. This is a technique that we work in, in games because in games you have uh, you have uh, limitations with lights and stuff. And if you pre-bake pre this lighting, pre-bake this, uh, these colors, you get a better performance. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, these characters here, they too are, are, they are designed in a shadeless way. So I can have control of the, exactly control of the colors that I put in, within the model. I have like create a, absolute creative control over colors and materials. Uh, I have more, this, this scene that I made is a completely uh, unlit scene. There is no lights in here, there's no shadow. They are all done by hand. If you see like this, this here is a little uh, plane, uh, is a transparent plane that I put to, 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 oh. to make the, the shadows here. It's not actually a really, really a shadow. That's cool. That's yeah. Amazing. So uh, the way I do this is uh, I pre I think about oh, okay I want the, the light coming in this direction. So as you can see in this wall here, the light is casting is, is more bright here, and in this face is is more dark. So I keep this in mind and start like coloring all of the model with these these different shading colors. If you take, if you see here in my materials, they are all different materials that I use for shading these objects. And as a guy, whenever you don't see something, you don't have to model it. So <laughs> if you have a television that you won't see the screen, you don't model that, right? <laughs> hey, Rodrigo, I just wanted to give you a heads up. We got about 10 more minutes, so take your time. I just wanted to give you oh, the time. All right, all right, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, You're doing good. So, yeah, this is pretty much about the way I, I, I work with, with colors and light within SketchUp. Uh, let's move on a bit. I showed this already. Uh, another example of, of materials, like this, this highlight here is done by hand. I just painted with a different color here. These are other only models that I made in SketchUp. Just before we finish, I wanted to show you this, this uh, these characters here that I, I, I made in SketchUp, they are all uh, 2D characters. Mm -hmm. I'll show them in a bit. These are the characters. We made this for Rocket Star and the, the game that I show you in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, so the game was about building rockets and we have like a bunch of themes of engineers and stuff that we, we need to design. And I was like, shit, how am I going to do like 2D designs? Uh, can I do this on SketchUp? And I thought, so yeah, maybe I can. I can use SketchUp as a vector tool, mostly. So the way I did this is I, I, I draw the character parts in planes 
and just uh, put them on, on top of each other to to make this character uh, appear to be from uh, from perspective. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, uh, the characters he is a bunch of shapes put together. The same the same uh, principle of that link system I show you it works here with the with this character here too. The arms, the legs. And as you can see, it's a very simple model. It's a very simple, a bunch of simple shapes just put together one to one on top of the, each other uh, with a little Z, a little distance here. Ah! <laughs> ah! So uh, doing this uh, in a modular way, you, you, you see that we have a, a structure of the character here. And just by changing hair, changing changing colors, changing outfits, we came up with a bunch of different designs for characters. Uh, these are, we, we came up with something like around two to 300 characters within this wow. game. It was a, a bunch of work, but it was really awesome. And it was a pleasure to do this within SketchUp. It's really easy to do, it's very, it's very straightforward. The, there is isn't much tools that you have to to use for this, uh, and that's what I like in SketchUp because you have like basic tools, and you can you can go like okay, I have these tools. What can I do with them? Like, what can I do to make cool stuff with them? You know, in, in in the end, you can end up with a lot of stuff. These are some things that I told you about that flat shading stuff. Uh, I have total control of the piece colors. It's better performance for real-time graphics. It's also a stylistic choice. And a SketchUp works good uh, making the models that way. This is, uh, I'll put it here, this is how I set up the, the only scene. I put light at zero, dark at 80. This is on the shadow dropdown. And I turn on the use, use some for shading. You putting the model like this, you are ready to work within a, a unlit fashion, like this way that I show you. So another characters that I, 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 I modeled in SketchUp, these are for a game I'm working with a friend. Uh, we need some characters to, to, to the game, and uh, this is the design that I came with. These are some uh, expression tests. The character would get really beaten at the game, so we are trying to facial expressions, some pain expressions. <laughs> I like the teary, the teary eyed one. <laughs> it yeah, looks like, he's the best. It's like, like a sad pickle. This is the basic model in SketchUp. As you can see, it's a bunch of primitive shapes, just tweaking a little bit. This is a like a circle, uh, sphere here to make the elbow. So I could like uh, rotate the elbow around this, this, uh, this sphere. I, so, I got a question for you, Rodrigo. As you do these okay. models, is there a certain number of sides you default to for your circles? Mm, no, actually, it's something that I, I it's, it depends on the zoom that you have, the, the, the way you put the camera on. Mm -hmm. uh, if the camera is farther away, you can use like less polygon to the to that to that sphere. If you have like a, a bigger uh, if, if the, the objects appear bigger on the screen, you you put more more poly to that. That's some. That's the way I approach this. Makes sense. All right. So it depends on how it's going to get used again. That's yeah. Depends on how it's getting used. Depends on how how big you see that object on screen. For most things, like even for if you are doing job for architecture and stuff, keep this in mind. Uh, do things. Uh, uh, the, the way you are looking at them. So if they don't need too much details, just you can keep detail of that. If you, things are, are bigger on the screen, you put more detail onto that. This is the, the, the rigging of the character. It's very basic. You, uh, you have like a torso and then the limbs. There is no, there is no knee or, or anything here. Mm. The two big characters that I show you, uh, these are the model exploded, so you can see the parts. Uh, again, the structure of the character, we need to move the head, the, the, the body, the, the, the legs and, and arms. And uh, I'm not getting into this. I think this is OK for now. Uh, 
this is a little technical stuff that I was going to. But the, the, in the end, we turned these characters into planes. We exported texture from that characters in SketchUp, so they can they they get very lightweight into the engine. This is our little cute characters that we designed for the, the, the other game, the, the Idol Sports game. So as you can see, again, I love working with modulation. It's easier, It's you can uh, have less work with that. I model like a bunch of, a bunch of hairs, a bunch of, uh, of different bodies and arm parts, and then I combine them in, in different ways. I color them in different ways. And we came up with like, a bunch of characters that we could, could use. I also made this. Uh, I think that the, the skin color. I just turned out this, but maybe you can, you can, <laughs> you can recognize some of this. That's awesome. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to show you. So yeah, this is where character use it for crowds. So they needed to be lightweight to use. So they needed to be simpler. And again, like Aaron put it, they were farther from the camera, so they had like less details on them. This is the character model. As you can see, they are very basic. I just used some, uh, the chamfer tool from, uh, uh, it's from Fredo, right? Yeah, Fre yeah. Fredo Corner. Yeah, Fredo Corner to, to, to round this, these boxes here, to round the, the hair, not be like straight, uh, uh, square so when you look from from afar they almost get like rounded shapes this is the character in blender so as it's a very lightweight character and yeah that's a i think that's the the brains that's the things that i wanted to show you how i approach uh uh doing the characters in sketchup in in a in a creative way so uh, other models that I wanted to show you, Iron already showed you this. This is a model uh, from New York that I made. Uh, it's not really from New York. I just call it in New York. You know, uh, this is a scene from from Star Wars that I made. Uh, the Tatooine scene. These are other characters that I I, I made. Uh, this is a, a, a character design sheet that I was exploring colors, showing to the client how the the character is built, how expression faces, facial expressions, colors, proportions works. So more more things. I think I did this on uh, on layout, I think. Nice. Uh, this one, people might recognize this guy. Uh, this is for other game that we, I was designing some characters. You from America, you don't like real football, so <laughs> <you'll get them. laughs> I have no idea who that is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, some more characters, some more works that I did using SketchUp. SketchUp is by my side every day. I I, I swear to you, I tried a bunch of times to leave SketchUp, but in the end, I was like, no, I do this better in SketchUp. I, yeah. I always come back to SketchUp. <laughs> nice. Some more character designs. This is actually a model that I did for my grandma and my grandfather. I made a little picture for that. Oh, that's nice. That's very cool. If you know this, this is Snake, Solid Snake from yeah. Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> that one I knew. <laughs> this is a couple of examples uh, for the, the base characters, uh, hair grooming, and uh, I had a little barber shop that I put this this together. This is my, my, my approach to the Chewbacca character. <laughs> So I, I, I like it. One of the things I really like, Rodrigo, is when you go to the big scenes, because yeah. you model everything with controlled polygons, you can yeah. put all those different pieces. And it, not, not only is it like your uniform art uh, just sensibility, but yeah. you can put so much more in there because you have those low poly models. So, I mean, if you did yeah, all yeah. of this where they were real smooth and everything, you'd have yeah. a model you couldn't even orbit around because it'd be too heavy. Yeah. No, this this model I can easily work with it. Uh, I, I, right now I can't because I have a bunch of stuff yeah. uh, open it here. But uh, yeah, the, even with a scene this complex, it, uh, it, the way I, 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 I approach economically in the, the polygons, it's a very workable scene. In, this scene has like a 13 megabytes, I think. It's not like a big deal. That's awesome. Yeah, because there is no texture. Texture is the most consuming uh, thing in the, in the model. 
So a little more works that I did. This is uh, the first game that I worked with, Last Life. It, it's not out yet. It, uh, so this is characters that I, I modeled at the time. At this time, I was really uh, trying some more facial stuff. Uh, so different C18 characters doing some, uh, you know, uh, more characters that I designed in SketchUp. Uh, the Chewbacca. I, as you can see, I'm really into Star Wars. <laughs> These are some layouts testing that we're, we are using for the, the Idol Sports game. We're testing layouts and SketchUp is great because uh, you can change this very easily. Um, it's not like other packages where if you need to, it, the, the way I see SketchUp is it's, it helps not only uh, putting together the final model, but uh, creating and designing stuff, which I find is very hard to do in order to the patches. Uh, designing things are creating things is very cool to do in SketchUp, it's very natural. Awesome. Uh, these are more works I did for the, the Idol Sports game. This is a model of my grandpa truck, I think. And this is my grandpa and grandma. <laughs> <laughs> So cool. good. So, right yeah, so here. just a, a little a key takeaways. Uh still like Tarantino. Don't steal don't steal from one, steal from a lot of people, and then you are not stealing, you're creating something. Then it's inspiration, yeah. right? Yeah. It's the same thing. So uh work your best within your set limitations. Set, if you have like infinite tools, you will have like infinite way of doing things, and that's sometimes that's not great because you can get confused and lost within the stuff that you are trying to use so pick the tools that some uh, tools and limitations that you want to work within and try to to to, to do your best within this this constraints another thing learn proper raster the go learn proper color composition volume stuff because i didn't have like a a proper uh, tuition in this in this part so i have to 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 to, to learn this Research and practice is uh, a great advice. So always be researching, always be practicing. Not only in SketchUp, but try try other tools. Try you can always bring uh, techniques and stuff from other tools and other works. Modulation is great and is your friend. Modulation for repetition and for variation is a great way to to work. And the, the my my other the shortcutter tools. Uh, this was something I wanted to 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 do in the presentation, but uh, we, I think I almost I already blew the time. But uh, yeah, and the final one I couldn't come up with a better one than this that Chris came up. So have fun. It's a big Lego Lego kit. That's nice. awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. So that's it, guys. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you guys. Please follow me. I, uh, this is my my, my pages. Uh, I'm on Instagram mostly. Behance where I showcase my work, and sometimes I'm on Twitch doing some live stuff. I always let people on Instagram know when I'm going live on Twitch. So if you can follow me, I would uh, be very grateful. Awesome, awesome. everyone. Give Thank you up. very much. Thank you guys for, having, for having me. Thank you people who uh, yeah. so, came to watch. You know what, Rodrigo? It's currently. Quiz time. So <laughs> we're going to let you well, ask a question. Can we're going to let you ask a question. Uh, so yeah, you can turn off your screen. Oh. Yeah. There we go. And, and, and everyone, pay close attention. Rodrigo's going to ask you a question. First person to respond with the correct answer, and we'll try to give you some, some hints Ooh. if we have to, will win today's prize. So, Rodrigo, take it away. Yeah, there's the prize right there. OK. So. Uh, what was the first Lego character shown in the presentation? Can you remember? Okay. All right. So early in the presentation, you showed us a Lego minifig that was dressed up in a certain way. And we saw lots of characters, but there was a Lego minifig early in the presentation. It was like the third or fourth slide, way at the beginning. <laughs> uh -huh. We have some guesses. Fiona said Star Wars. It wasn't Star oh, Wars. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Got it, Penny. You got it, Penny Gaskin. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations, <laughs> Penny. It's coming to you, man. <laughs> Good deal. Nice. Oh man, you, you're hey, getting Penny, the prize. There's the prize. Uh, 
maybe we can talk about this, you know. Like, uh... <laughs> no, Rodrigo can't steal the prize. It's just for Kenny. <laughs> oh, man. So, right, Aaron, so, I think it is – It's go ahead. I, I'll just say I that was an awesome presentation. I, th I think I learned a lot of things. I'm, I'm pretty excited to apply some of this stuff. And I, we had a lot of questions come in. So uh, we got about 13 minutes left, but I think we can get through uh, a handful of questions before we hop on over. And remember, if, if you haven't put a question in, you still have time to do it. Upvote the questions you want to hear asked the most. And if you don't get a chance to ask your question, that's what the Fireside Lounge is for over in our forum. Rodrigo will be hanging out there for about half an hour or so live right after this completes. All right. So let's, let's just, hop in and ask a few of these. Okay. I'll share my screen again because probably I'll need to, I'll need it to, to like answer some things. Okay. Sure. All right. Uh, so the first question comes from Ashan and he asked, which extensions are most used by you in designing a game? Uh, extensions, ex uh, underwear, I was chasing for under, sorry. Uh, uh, extensions within SketchUp, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, I, I don't use a lot of extensions. I mostly, uh, I use a few. These are, these are the extension lists that I prepared to show you guys. Uh, these are the ones that I use within my work. But if I need to choose one from these to, to, that I can't live, live with would be Clean Up by TomTom. Uh, this is the best, the best, the best, not the best, but uh, the more useful uh, extensions in my opinion, because you can clean your models, you can design in a more dirty way with it. Uh, like I put my, oh, this is cool. I didn't show you this. <laughs> Just a second. I did, I did a, a little stop motion animation of this guy. Nice. This guy. <laughs> 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 Inside of SketchUp? So, yeah. Yeah, I got your scenes like, with your different parts there. Right. That's awesome. You know? So uh, just uh, uh, the, I, I use Cleanup. This is Cleanup. It's right here, extensions, Cleanup. So uh, you can clean your model from uh, geometry to the, the correct layers. You can purge materials. You can like uh, fix fix lines and stuff. And what I do is uh, that I, I put this plugin into a shortcut. So as you can see here, like if I'm drawing like a wall or something here, I end up with these lines that I don't want because I want to extrude everything together. So what I do, I put the, the, the cleanup tool in a shortcut. For me, it's like Shift C. So we clean up my geometry and I can keep like working with it. Hey, on, on that note, Rodrigo, the, the next question we had was from Marconi, and he asked, which are the most use, most used shortcut keys in your process? So in addition to your Shift-C, what else do you yeah. use? Oh, OK. I, I, I did a little list here. So <laughs> these are the kind of shortcuts that I use. I have like navigation shortcuts, manipulation shortcuts, visualization shortcuts, and functions, and extension shortcuts. I'll show you this in a bit. You don't have to have this in mind. You can always come back to the video and see the, the this that I put here. Uh, so I use I mostly use like uh, navigation shortcuts to 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 navigate around the model. So I I hit F and I go like straight from the the, the front view. T for the top view, I for the isometric view. Mm. I have a shortcut to change from perspective to uh, to, to isometric. Yes, to orthographic, so I can I can navigate. I have like a, a Z shortcut, uh, uh, so I can zoom in whatever I'm selecting. So if I I'm selecting this and I want to to zoom in, I just press Z and I jump over to this character. So these are shortcuts. I I, I, I see uh, SketchUp, they, he has uh, already a bunch of shortcuts, but uh, I, I get like uh, uh, different techniques with other, other softwares like 3D Max, like Blender, and I start bringing these techniques here. So changing views is a big deal. Uh, sometimes you need to, to do this fast for modeling. Uh, other shortcuts that I, I keep here with me are the shadow, the uh, turn on shadows, turn on lines, turn on uh, uh, profiles, things that you have here on, on the view, 
on the view tab. And sometimes these, these, these are not just visualization. Uh, it's not for, oh, okay, I want to show my, my modern wireframe. Sometimes you use this for selecting stuff, like uh, easily selecting just lines and not having the face uh, here to, to mess up the selection. Um, what else? Let me see here. Um, this, this is just some, yeah, I think these are the most, the most, uh, the most uh, shortcuts that I use. I also have the, the plugins bind to my shortcuts. I have this pipe along path is, 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 a, is a plugin that That's I use that saved me a lot of time. You can create like paths. So the, the thing about uh, shortcuts is like, uh, it's like uh, freeing your mind from, from having to remember uh, to, to click on the screen or have to, when you, you do shortcuts, you really freeze, freeze you, you, your workflow. You do things faster in a more natural way, you know. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice, and then may maybe uh, we had some requests if you could share a, a screenshot of your shortcut keys maybe in the forum later on. Sure, uh, sure, definitely. Awesome, and, and then, uh, so we have a couple more minutes here. I'm gonna try to squeeze in a, maybe one or two more questions. So uh, uh, Camila was asking, what is the average work time for a scene like your Game of Thrones one? So when you put that together, do you, do you have like a ballpark of the uh, number of hours it took you to put that? Yeah, I, I have the, exactly. <laughs> number of hours <laughs> for the for the I, I think I was a little on fire with this this illustration was a, a very productive uh, time in my life but uh, I I did those scenes in like uh, 20, 20, 20 to 24 hours I think of work okay. of actually work all right wow that still seems yeah. like a like you're still cruising. There's a lot of content in one of those drawings. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Impressive. Yeah, it's it's about like I, I think uh, four to five days. Uh, wow. To do an illustration like that. That's so cool. That is awesome. Yeah. That's a that's a, you are a wealth of knowledge, Rodrigo. Th uh, thanks so much for sharing so much oh, of it with. So much. with us Sorry for the infinite tunnel you know, here. So oh, okay. just. <laughs> We've all seen. Before. We all live in the coronavirus, and we're oh, bye, there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, that wasn't me. I didn't do that. I, uh, you guys saw my hands were up here, so that was that was. No, that's. Uh, I, I mean, that was awesome. I could listen to a lot more of that, but uh, unfortunately, we we did have oh, to. Sorry, okay. <laughs> wrong, wrong video stores. Uh, but no, we, we, we did want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for swinging by. Uh, thank you for just dumping so much information on us. That was amazing. <laughs> well, sorry so, for, uh, I, I just wanted to show a lot of things. So I got like, ah. hey, drink from the fire hose or don't drink at all. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll we'll be keeping our eye on your Instagram account and your your live streams, you know, uh, because yeah, we I, like you really packed my head in uh, today. So thank you nice. again for sharing with everyone around the fire today. Cool, that was cool. awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, right. guys. Thank you, thank you, the the people that are here today. There are a lot of Brazilian folks here. I'm very happy to see. And yeah. uh, oh, just another thing that I I forgot. Steve, it's really nice to see you. Because <laughs> I mostly do, you are the man behind the man. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and, and I'm I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm learning something every time. And and Rodrigo, we'll we'll be in touch. Uh, nice. Thanks again for coming to visit us today. And uh, we'll, we'll hope we'll hope that we'll uh, we'll see more of you soon in the near future. Nice. All thanks right. a lot. Guys. All right. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. All right, All right. Bye -bye. everyone, give it up for Rodrigo Cersei. No, well, well, I get. I guess it's nice to see you, and everybody's just bored of the other guy. It's like <laughs> Steve and that, and that SketchUp guy. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but you know what, Aaron? Though the sun is setting or has set once again on uh, uh, our show for today, we're getting a lot of applause. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today in the Fireside Chat series, and uh, we hope that you'll join us uh, next week for our, for our guest next week. Aaron, who do we have next week? Next week is Daniel Tall talking about some landscape architecture. Awesome. He's cut some time out of his busy schedule to see us. Uh, please join us in the forum at the Fireside Chat uh, after party. And uh, yeah, and and we'll, we'll try to get uh, some more answers to your questions. Aaron, take it away. 
All right, quick word of wisdom before we sign out. This one's short, sweet, simple, save. It doesn't matter how awesome the model is you create in SketchUp. If you don't save it, you don't got it. So with That's that, right. good night. Good night, everyone.